Welcome to the Social Impact Level Up podcast. This is where we blur the lines between business, nonprofit, and impact. Social entrepreneurs in our community share their stories of how they are changing the world and building a legacy of health, wealth, happiness, and wellness. I'm your host, Wendy V, along with my co-host, Rodrigo Bravo. Together, we're social entrepreneurs building a collective of impactful humans who are going to make this world a better place. We hope you'll join us. Here's today's episode. Every week I say this is one of my favorite episodes to reflect on and to listen to, but then I find another one of our gems and I go, no, 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 this one, this one, this one. Today's episode is all about how do you continue to choose entrepreneurship and show up for yourself so that you can show up for others. This is a tough road and it's not easy and perseverance is the number one thing that I have learned in 2022 that makes a huge difference. So join us for this conversation. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you really get to understand a little bit more about how we as social entrepreneurs can continue to make sure that the world becomes a better place by simply showing up every single day. If you are struggling or you have not been able to start your journey as a social entrepreneur, listen to this episode really carefully because we talk a lot about what are the tips and tools and things that you need in order to start and be successful. I hope you enjoy it. Take a listen. We're almost done with season one and We're coming back at you with season two very soon. Hello, and welcome to the Social Impact Level Up podcast. This is Wendy V, and I am your host. We have taken a little bit of time off from Clubhouse, and now we are back with our room, Entrepreneur Till I Die. And we're going to talk about what it means to commit to entrepreneurship. We'll have a discussion about perseverance, and I'll share some social audio that inspired this room. So I hope you're in for a wonderful conversation today, and as we get the room started, more people will join the conversation, and we'll be talking just about all of the things entrepreneurship and overcoming life's challenges as an entrepreneur. So if you don't know me, I'm Wendy V, and I am the leader of a group of people who their mission is to change the world. And that means that a lot of times we as social entrepreneurs have something that we want to do that it's an idea, it's our passion, it's something that we are called to change because we see another way forward. And a lot of the times that requires a ton of commitment and a ton of perseverance. So that is why talking about this topic is extremely important for our community. And I'm excited to be here with this podcast talking about that today. Hey, Wendy, what's going on? Hey, we're back in the club doing the room. This is exciting. This is exciting, especially because you're in a new place. That is awesome. I am very far away from Texas. That is true. Um, So we are talking today about entrepreneur till I die. And this is a room that I wanted to do because there was a funny social audio that I was looking at putting on a reel. And then I decided not to just because I really just like listening to it. (laughs) know that I have anything I'm that passionate about yet. Um, But it was really challenging the other day when I was thinking about getting back to my normal entrepreneur schedule and trying to figure out how to do that. And I thought of all of the things that have changed in the last month. And the word that came to mind was perseverance. And that's because I know as I've been through this entrepreneur journey, the last year has definitely um, tried my patience multiple times, but also I have an immense amount of gratitude to myself for sticking with it and for the decisions that I've made and the challenges I've overcome and all of the things that have happened in the last year. So that's why I wanted to talk about this um, this topic. So I'm excited that you're here with me. So I'm curious, um, what is up with you? Do you want to do just a quick update? Because I feel like I haven't talked to you in forever. (laughs) If it's really weird, uh, but what what do you want our podcast people to know about what's going on with you right now, Rodrigo? No, it's the same old, same old. I've been very, very busy with some projects here that we are doing with the radio show and really just trying to highlight 
some uh, Latino, Latina artists uh, here in, in Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. As you know, I'm very big in the band book circle as far as being an advocate for literacy and for literacy that really represents us. And unfortunately, because of the legis legislature here in Texas, they've uh, banned certain books and we've been kind of on a crusade for that. But there's a lot of planning, a lot of organization involved with that. The other thing too is, man, I, I don't know how you feel, Wendy, but it just seems like the hits just keep coming and coming and coming. And I'm talking as far as like society is concerned, uh, especially in the last week. I mean, in the last week, we've had some pretty shocking uh, rulings, you know, cases, news. It's just been a lot. It's been a lot, especially uh, with, with, you know, certain tragedies that have occurred recently uh, in the last month or so. So, yeah, no, it's just, it's just been a lot. But I'm really happy that you made the transition that you've needed to do and that you were excited for. And you are now on the East Coast in, uh, in Maryland, correct? Yeah, I was in Maryland before heading to Texas before the pandemic. And then I was there for two years and it was just time to uh, to leave. I didn't think I was going to set up roots here ever, but I definitely knew I was not setting up roots in Texas, particularly for the reasons that you were talking about. I, as a policy person, just absolutely hate Texas policy. I hate the way they do it, that they only meet every two years to have a session for their legislature and everything gets decided in less than six months. Like, I think it's ridiculous. And I also think the people who are making policy in Texas really <laughs> need a reality check, according to uh, a whole lot of brown people who are in their state that are underrepresented and have no voice. And particularly when it comes to things like abortion and health care and immigration, it's just Texas as a state is always a conflict for me. I've known for a long time that I had this internal just um, not like resentment, but a little bit for the way that Texas acts sometimes. <laughs> but then, of course, I moved there and I was like, oh, I could see Texas as its own vibe. Like, I get it. But I also don't get it at the same time because there's a lot of racism that's allowed to perpetuate there. And there's a lot of racist policies that are birthed in Texas and then moved out to other places. And it's just um, my value system just does not align with that state as it does not align with a lot of states. And I'm just a coastal girl. So coming back to Maryland, I'm like, yes, I'm back in a blue state. This is like so great. Um, but, you know, I'm not in a walkable part of the city anymore. So I'm definitely in the burbs, um, hanging out with the dog. And it's um, it's different. It's definitely different from being in the center of Houston. So, yeah, so that's what's going on with me and, and my uh, my Texas rants, which I'm sure you've heard before, Rodrigo. So it's no surprise to you. Yeah, yeah, I'm still here in Texas and I'll be here in Texas. But uh, obviously those kind of things, they do kind of affect you, you know, and, and I think uh, I think it's kind of part of entrepreneur till I die. Right. That's what you're talking about. Look, I want to be an entrepreneur, but I got to entrepreneur the way I want to entrepreneur. And a lot of times that means that your values are front and center. And I know I know your values and you're very uh, proud of your values, very adamant about those values. And here in Texas, I, it's, it's unfortunate. They just don't align. So I could see why that would be that would be important for you. And it's important for me as well. Right. And, and, and I might not need to make that choice as well. I'm probably just just to just to add into that really quick. I'm probably one of the few people that actually encourages people to stay or move to Texas, so that we can move the state and yeah. the needle a little I, bit. You know, I was thinking that it's like you know either you want to have people infiltrate and change things, but I or you want to have people leave. But I think the the hard part about Texas is that I I saw how when you try to change things, people double down and dig their boots in deeper. <laughs> And you're like, whoa, okay, now you're really upset. Now you're really going to be racist. You were racist before, but now you're going to be like super extra racist. Got it. Um, so it, it is interesting to see how Texas operates. And I, But I'm grateful for the time I spent there, the people I met. I had an amazing group of friends that I made in the last two years, including yourself, who happened to reside in the great state of Texas. So I'm sure I will be back. Um, but it, it's a nice break um, from having to really, you know, be 
frightened for my life and my health <laughs> at the same time and my immigration being questioned my immigration status being questioned just because I'm brown you know it's just <laughs> I feel I feel like uh, it's funny because I, I have a friend I ran into when I was um, walking around. He, he's African American and he lives in my area, but he used to work with me. And he goes, you know, I feel like I like to just be walking around here as if there's no weight on my back and I'm not worried and looking behind my back at somebody like who's gonna get me. Because but once I go to the south, that entirely changes and there's this pressure on me as a brown person or a person of color who you feel like people are looking at you, watching you and not necessarily supporting you. And um, he said, you know, once I get back to the DC area, that kind of just lifts, that pressure just comes off. And it was interesting that he phrased it that way because that was exactly how I felt. I got past Virginia's border and I was like, ah, oh, yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm home free. This is great. But, you know, everywhere has um, their mix of politics and, and Maryland is definitely a purple state, not necessarily a blue state. So, yeah. So let's get on with today's conversation. I want to play this social audio for you because I know there's a couple more folks who joined us. So welcome, Christina and Anna. Good to see you guys. And this is our first room back in the club and on Clubhouse in about a month and a half, just because like we, we were just talking about Rodrigo and I've had some some other things going on. But in that month and a half, I've been thinking about, you know, what are we what are we creating in this club and what are we creating with this movement of people? And just like you alluded to, Rodrigo, there's just such a vacuum in the social impact space right now, and particularly with um, all of the policy shifts that are happening we're going to need to make a lot more progress progress forward. And we were already progressing at a certain level with the, the sort of safeguards that we had and the safety nets that we had. But now as we're questioning more and more things like gay rights and um, interracial marriage and all these other things that potentially could come into question policy-wise after um, Roe v. Wade was struck down, it, it just to me seems like social entrepreneurship is so much more needed now and those of us who are already on the path, we have to be the ones to double down and say, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to shift my my values. I'm not going to align with what you're telling me you want me to align with. Like, I'm going to continue to do this because I know that my movements that I'm moving forward will change the world. And if I continue, things will get better, right? And so as you make those conversations with yourself, those things can be extremely powerful, but they also can seem overwhelming to people. So I just wanted to play the social audio because I was thinking our community needs to hear this. Like this is just such a powerful statement. So let me play it real quick and hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Entrepreneur means I did that shit by myself. In conclusion, entrepreneur till I die, I deserve this by. So that is the short social audio clip from, um, I think it's, I'm not sure exactly who it originated with, but I can tell you who it's tagged with. And um, it, it's a place that I was listening to, and I just laughed so many times when I heard it. It's tagged with simply Nicole, but I'm sure that's not who, who created it. And I was thinking, yeah, you know, if you had an award for the last year of your entrepreneurship, what would you get that award for? <laughs> And what would you literally drop the mic and say, like, entrepreneur till I die, I deserve this, bye, and walk out? And I think for me, the um, the moment in the last year that I can be super proud of and super proud of myself for persevering is calling out the sort of racist and um, questionable uh, policies that I saw at my old work and putting them in a book chapter for an organization that's primarily, um, you know, serves Latinos and is has a Latino audience. And I think that it was a lot of commitment for me to be able to talk about how systemic racism in organizations works and what happens to people when they um, when they experience it. And it also was just a difficult story to convey because you think that these things don't exist anymore. But when I put it into the chapter, you know, it was once out in the world. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay, well, here it is, entrepreneur till I die because I'm not sure if anybody's gonna hire me after I write this, right? And not that I think every employer is gonna Google me and go and read all the things I've written, but 
maybe I don't want another job. And I think as more people were asking me when I was doing back in Maryland and assuming that I was working for the federal government again, I thought about this, this social audio. And I was like, no, <laughs> entrepreneur till I die. I'm not going to, I am not turning back. I am not going to give up my business. I am not going to go look for a job just because I'm in Maryland again. And so that's where, um, you know, it's just been a, a commitment for me and perseverance over the last year. But that's what I wanted to talk about today, which is how do you continue to persevere so that those of us who are doing this social impact work, that we can continue to create the change that needs to happen. So I don't know what you want to add. What do you want to add to that, Rodrigo? But I'm going to um, see if Christina and Anna want to join us on the stage. No, that, that's a great outlook. And it really is important to, I, I think one important thing that I want to say is it's really important to be honest with your entrepreneur journey. Uh, you decided, hey, you know what? No, I want to stick with it. I'm down with it. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do what I need to do to make this successful. I also want to encourage folks when they are thinking about that to be honest with themselves. And it's okay if you do have to get a job or you have to get a side gig or something like that, but be honest with what you're capable of, especially if you have something that's going, you know, you got some traction, you got some momentum. You definitely don't want to go to the point where like you were uh, saying, Wendy, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and give up. You know, I'm here in Maryland. Let me get a job first and let me, you know, yeah, you don't want to do that. I would definitely not recommend that. I would definitely recommend folks uh, be honest with their circumstance, see what they can do, but really go for it. And it's really a testament to folks persevering when it's hard. You know, I know for you, your entrepreneur journey, uh, I, I know you had it tough. I know there was times when you had like, oh, crap, what am I going to do with this and that? But having faith in your in your business and being honest with that business you know, it's, it, it really makes a big difference. It really allows somebody to just kind of evaluate and make sure, hey, you know what? Here's my path. Here's where I want to be. And here's the steps that I need to do. And those steps that you need to do sometimes do involve getting, you know, a, a gig or, or, or a part-time job or whatever. Or you just say, hey, you know what? Let me tighten down the hatchet. Let me, let me go or tighten down the hatch. I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and... Uh, be a little bit more frugal. Maybe I'm not going to eat out, blah, 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 whatever. But I'm going to continue with this journey. And I think it's really important that people do that evaluation whenever they're going through their entrepreneur journey and they have a big move like yourself where you move from one state to the other or where you feel like, hey, you know what? Maybe I need to change uh, uh, an approach, you know, because of X, Y, Z. So I think that's really important. And I, I, and I like the clip. I like the clip, you know, obviously entrepreneur till I die. It, it, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I love it. You gotta, you gotta have the faith. You gotta have the faith in, in, in yourself and what you're doing. Yeah, I agree. And I, and I think we've talked about this in a previous podcast before in a previous room, you have to make those pivots and those choices in order to be successful and stay in business. But a lot of the times, you know, as an entrepreneur, we're, we need multiple streams of income to succeed. And you're right. You know, as I've been looking at, you know, my time here and having a little bit less social time and a little more time to work on my business, you know, am I committing that time versus sort of just sitting around and doing nothing, watching you Netflix or something? And, you know, what am I really doing with that time that could be income generating? So where, you know, I don't want to go back and have a nine to five job. Do I want to create a um, printable something that I could sell as passive income on, um, you know, Amazon? That's actually what I'm looking at right now. So there's a lot of other options. And I think even if you're choosing this entrepreneurship route, like you said, you know, the commitment is there, but it, you have to pivot and you have to move in, in different directions sometimes in order to keep moving forward. And as long as you just don't stop that momentum completely, you know, you'll be able to keep um, getting towards your success that you're envisioning for yourself. So I just want to invite Anna to join the conversation and hear what you thought of the clip. And if there's anything you want to tell us about what's going on with you and what you're thinking about when you hear the phrase entrepreneur till I die. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Rodrigo. Thank you so much for having me up. Um, yeah, I was just I just got on Clubhouse like 10 minutes ago. So I was um, I was looking for something like this because um, I am driving home and I'm going to drive for like two and a half hours. And I always, every time I'm on the road, 
I always think about what am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? Just because um, I left my job, I'm going to say February 21st or January 21st. I don't remember exactly when. And I opened up an office for PNC, so appropriate casualty insurance. And I'm struggling. I'm running out of my um, my savings. Um, so I always think, like lately I've been thinking, should I just go back to work? Should I uh, get a, a part-time job, like a work from home, like remote job so I can be at the office? and still work so I can get a check again because I was just used to having my my check and my bonuses and everything and now I'm kind of like struggling to move up like I already did like um I have a website um, I have someone that manages like my social media I go to events but I just I'm not making any profit and I feel like I don't know if I should keep trying or should I just, you know, go back to work and do the maybe life insurance on my free time. And I'm just kind of confused right now. Oh, Anna, I'm glad you came in here too. That's great to see you. And I'm sorry to hear that you're having this challenge that you're facing, but I think it's an opportunity Anytime I was in that space of I'm burning through my savings and I'm, you know, doing all these things um, that are, you know, not necessarily moving forward, it took a minute before I realized I needed to take a day and not do anything. (laughs) And this might be helpful for you to do as well. I literally took a day and I laid on the couch and I thought about all of the thoughts I was having and I could feel feel how they were literally just coming up in my head and not necessarily founded on anything because I wasn't really looking at the whole picture. I was um, so focused on the money part that I wasn't really focused on some of the transformation that had happened in myself and in some of my clients because it didn't turn into money right away, right? And, And once I had that moment of, okay, what am I really doing and how can I really spend my time? And if I did need to go back to say teaching spin classes a couple times a week, just to have some money coming in regularly, what would that mean for me as you know, my schedule and my quote unquote freedom as an entrepreneur and all of those things. And so I just let my mind, you know, do its thing. And then after that day, I said, okay, enough. <laughs> We're not going to ruminate with these thoughts anymore. We've thought about every single possible thing we could possibly think about. And now, you know, as I want to proceed to the next step, let's see what of those thoughts my intuition tells me I should proceed with. And the first thing that came to mind was that I wasn't completely monetizing all of the the tools that I had available to me. And since then, I've kind of gone about looking at that structure of affiliate marketing and um, the websites that I own and how can I completely monetize everything that I have um, already under my belt that I've built, including this podcast. And I think that, you know, when I look at it that way, I see how much infrastructure I have already. And it would be almost silly of me to not continue to monetize these things. Because as I do that, and I create these other passive income streams, those will be sufficient enough to take care of my bills. If I do what like Rodrigo said, make sure my lifestyle, my lifestyle is at the appropriate scale. Now, will they allow me to thrive? No, that's the part. So when I'm thinking about, oh, my friends are on vacation right now and I want to be on vacation or I want to do this or I want to do that and I don't feel secure doing it, that's what motivates me to keep going for the big clients, for the, like you said, going to the networking events, going to all the things, because a lot of the time referrals are where I get my big clients. So it's a lot about building relationships versus just showing up online in places. And that's increasingly why I haven't been on Clubhouse as much because I've been showing up everywhere else. Um, But I'm trying to build strong relationships in other places beyond Clubhouse because I know I have strong relationships here. So I altered my strategy completely around May and have been working through that strategy to now. And I can tell you, I've landed a $10,000 deal. I landed a $6,000 deal. I've landed a couple of other little random pieces of money here and there. 
And um, all of that come together to say, you know, I feel a lot better mentally because I know I have another base of money that has come in um, that I can work from. But do I feel secure? No. Right. So I think this is where, you know, what you're talking about. It's like, yes, there may be things that are happening for me, but I don't quite feel at the level I want to be at. So my mindset is how do I keep adding to the passive income? How do I keep adding to my portfolio of things that are monetized? And then how do I keep going out and spending my energy getting these big clients? Because I know that those big clients are actually what I want to be spending my time doing. I don't want to spend my time doing lives all the time. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. So I don't know if that's helpful to you and Rodrigo, if you want to add anything in, but that's um, something that I've been working on too, as well as that mindset piece around the money and how that can cloud your vision for what you're trying to do. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Wendy. I think one of the big things that folks do get stuck on is the lack of results that are immediate. Uh, it, it's definitely a long game. It's definitely a long game whenever you are an entrepreneur, when you have your own business. It's important to have things that help support you at the same time. That's why, for example, with me, I, I do mediation. I do co-parenting and co consultancy and coaching. Uh, I also work at a ra the radio station. Th those are my three main things that I like to do, that I love to do, and so forth, right? Uh, but they don't bring in all the income that I would like for them to bring. And so therefore I have side business. I got side hustles that I work on. And I know that those side hustles, I have to do them. That way I can supplement my income and make sure that I'm, you know, at a place where I feel comfortable. Like Wendy was saying, uh, uh, you know, we, we all have certain levels, right? That we want to achieve. And maybe we're not at that level. Maybe we want to be a little bit higher. Okay. What do you have to do to get there? How does it, uh, uh, align with your vision for your own small business. So for example, I definitely probably could uh, do a little bit more with one of my side hustles and probably make more money. The issue is I wouldn't have fun. I wouldn't enjoy it. It's not my passion. It's not what I really feel like I was born to do. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I have actively chosen not to pursue that side hustle with a greater emphasis towards that because it's not what my focus is so again it's okay to have a side job it's okay to have a a gig it's okay but to, uh, to but you got to keep the focus on what's most important to you one last point maybe it is important for you to have a constant flow of income maybe it is important you know to to have that salary or, or that hourly wage that you need to feel comfortable and that's okay as well uh, you know it, it's very hard to feel secure if you don't have security, right? Obviously. And part of that is finances. So it's okay if you have, hey, you know what? I'm going I'm to I'm go ahead and get this job, you know, one month, two month break or whatever. And then I'm going to get right to it because that's what you really want to do. Wendy did that. I, I know she moved. She had to focus on the move and she said, hey, you know what? I'm going to take a break. I got to take a break. I got to take care of this first so that I can focus on my business with even greater emphasis once i get there so i'm set up instead of like doing it half moving and then half working because then you, you realize that you half fast everything that's just the truth so you what you want to do is really kind of evaluate everything that you're doing and again keep what's most important for you in that focus if it's your entrepreneur spirit it's your job it's your your company your llc whatever it is definitely encourage you to keep pursuing it, but find things that are going to help you provide the other security that you're looking for, whether it's additional income, whether it's time with, you know, your kids, whether it's, Hey, I want to go out and have a little bit of fun. You know, I want to find a way to facilitate that and, 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 uh, um, be able to have the funds for that. It, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as you keep everything in perspective and make sure that, Hey, this entrepreneur life, it is till you die. Entrepreneur till I die. The reason for that is because that's what that's where we really put our dreams at. That's where we really want our passions to go to. So I definitely recommend that for y'all, for, for everybody, uh, when it comes to these types of conversations. 
Thanks, Rodrigo. And yeah, absolutely. There are times when you do in your life want to have a steady paycheck. I know that was one of the things that kept me with the government. It's like steady paycheck and every other Friday off. Sweet. <laughs> this is great. But when I realized that I as a person was not progressing and if I am not progressing as a person, is that paycheck really worth it to me? Um, would I rather risk having myself um, be happy and healthy and focusing on my wellness and also building and progressing in my career at the same time, I would much rather have the risk financially than be in that other environment and not be thriving and um, still feel like I wasn't thriving and healthy for a lot of other reasons that weren't related to finance. So I just wanted to welcome, I think it's Sashin, but you can feel free to um, correct me if, if I'm wrong with your name. I just want to welcome you to the stage and to the conversation. I'm not sure if you heard the clip that I played from the social audio. I'll play it again before we start, just because I love listening to this clip. But we are talking today about entrepreneur till I die. And so let's play this clip and then we'll go to you for a conversation. Entrepreneur means I did that shit by myself. In conclusion, entrepreneur till I die, I deserve this, bye. All right, that is the clip. And so welcome to the stage. What do you have to offer? And um, this is our club. Please join us. I think you're probably new around these parts. We'd love to have you. Uh, so hello, uh, hello, Mindy and uh, Rodrigo. So my question is, like, how uh, to increase our source of income, passive source of income? Uh, we have to work on the business uh, which we are having currently or we have to go for a different kind of uh, uh, different kind of uh, ways to increase our passive income oh that's a good question i think um, i'm still learning with you about this passive income thing and i can tell you that it's, it's interesting what I've learned from passive income um, is it's about volume in some cases. In some cases, it's about um, what you put out there, what you've created um, to get that passive income. And there, you know, it's still a whole business <laughs> sometimes. And so depending on what you're doing um, for that passive income stream, it, it could be something that still will require you to do a little bit of work. So while you might have another business you're really focused on and you're creating these other sources of income, you'll still have to realize that you'll be trading some time and some energy for creating that passive income. Um, but I'm curious, what kinds of things were you looking at? Um, were you looking at like drop shipping or other things online? No, uh, because uh, I'm in India and here online uh, drug shipping is uh, very common. Like everyone are uh, jumping into that business. So it is uh, very competitive nowadays in India. So currently I'm owning a retail shop, uh, which is like, it is uh, due to big giant joining to the pharma uh, chain retail sector so it is become stagnant for me so currently so neither uh, i'm it's running on a same phase it's not growing from past one year so i'm making money from it but uh, from past one year uh, the profit margin is not as much as expected the growth is not as much as expected so it is stagnant now. So what I th uh, thought is to go up for another uh, business or uh, so that's my main. Yeah. And I saw you're in pharmacy when I looked at your, your profile and I was trying to make sure you were a legit person. I said, I think he's, he has an MBA in pharmaceutical management. He's probably legit, <laughs> but I, I am excited to meet you. And I think that you bring a great point. This club is all about what's going on in a lot of parts of the world and how we can connect and collaborate and share ideas. So I just want to thank you for representing India and being here um, with us on Clubhouse. And with pharmaceutical management, it's like a very specific topic and pharmacy being a very specific topic, you probably could further monetize that knowledge before you try something completely different. If you wanted to use, you know, all your educational investment um, in trying to at least build something else around what you're doing. So, you know, you might ask yourself some questions like where are other people 
needing related services to pharmacy that I could um, possibly get into an industry that would leverage my pharmacy knowledge or how can I create efficiencies in um, these products or these services in my country that might be um, worth people paying me for those efficiencies. So I think if you asked yourself some of those kinds of questions before you completely pivot to something else, you might explore some other options within your, um, your field. And then if that doesn't seem likely or they don't seem feasible or it's not an investment that's worth your time and energy, then of course, you know, looking at other options, there's tons of things online, even if you're not doing drop shipping and you have other, you know, e-courses or things that you could teach, um, there's a lot of other ways to monetize your knowledge and your time um, and your skills. So I hope that's helpful. And I don't know, Rodrigo, if you want to add anything, because you've been thinking about this stuff as well. Yeah, I think one of the one of the things that I always uh, kind of hear from folks is trying to do things differently. Um, a lot of times we are adamant about doing things the way we've been doing them. And maybe we need to try a different way of doing them. What do I mean, what do I mean by that? Um, maybe you're marketing yourself in a way that's seen as traditional or non-traditional. Maybe we need to focus on that and say, hey, let's flip that. Let's try some non-traditional avenues or, hey, let's go ahead and see what the market does and let's follow that lead. Um, you know, when we when we talk about things that are not working, uh, a lot of times we want to kind of discard the whole thing. Um, I would recommend not doing that. You've already invested some time. You've already invested a, a lot of knowledge. You, you are familiar with everything that goes on with that particular sector in that industry. Maybe it's just a, a changing the approach. Uh, changing the marketing, uh, changing, you know, wh where certain thing, uh, wh wh where perhaps you start at. Uh, there, there's a variety of things. I would definitely recommend exhausting all those options first before pivoting to a completely brand new industry. Because again, all the time you've already spent to construct this, to make this, and the point that you're at, you will lose all that if you completely pivot into a new industry. So for example, right, I am a mediator and I do parenting, co-parenting, uh, coaching and consultancy. And then all of a sudden I decide, you know what? I don't like that anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and get into uh, agriculture. I'm gonna be an agriculture consultant. And, I mean, I'm talking about two completely different industries, all the work and all the gains and everybody that, I, that, that has known me, the referrals, the websites, every single thing is basically worthless at that point when it comes to agriculture. You know, I would have to start all over. I'd have to start new people and I would have to network differently. I would have to go somewhere else. So that's the point. You lose a lot of the progress that you've already made. It's hard to see that progress, right? A lot of times we do have our businesses and we see them and we say, man, it's stagnant, but we don't see the entirety of the, of the business that we've built already. For Wendy and I, it's it's already been over a year, you know, for us to change and suddenly pivot to something else, we're losing that entire year. You know, now there are some industries where you can pivot to something else and it's closely related or there's some type of similarity or some type of parallel that you can use the knowledge in your contacts and resources and easily transfer them there. That, that might be something to consider. But if you're considering something like a wholesale change, and a completely different industry, I would definitely recommend at the very least looking at what you're also losing versus just what you could possibly gain. Yeah, so I don't know if that helps you, Session, but I just wanted to give you the space to respond or have any other thoughts. Yeah, I, uh, but I, I got satisfied with uh, Rodri's and her solution. Great, great. And how long have you been in business? Are you still there? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How long have you been in business? Uh, currently, I'm. This is my third year. Uh, third year as a product manager. I'm working in uh, as a brand manager in pharmaceutical company and also running my own pharmacy from past five years. So 
That's great. So yeah, you have a lot of um, experience and time in this industry and probably a relationship too, if you've been doing some of the sales work. So maybe thinking, you know, um, downstream products from the ones that you've already worked with and selling or, you know, other related products or things that are related to pharmacy supply or even business to business solutions for other pharmacists. I think there's a lot of ways that you could think about your industry and try to find opportunities that, um, you know, you'd be able to leverage your experience. And welcome. And one more. Oh, and go ahead. one more question. Sure. Uh, currently, I'm, currently, I'm in a situation where uh, my business and my job both are making similar money. So, so that's why I'm confused to take a risk uh, of quitting my job and taking uh, doing uh, continuing full time as a as a my retail shop. Oh, this is a great question. I get this question a lot because I did sort of backwards of what the, the uh, advice usually is for a lot of entrepreneurs. People say you have to have about a year or so of your income, at least maybe more that you've saved as a cushion for, you know, going full time entrepreneurship, but you already have some business under your belt. So that may be a little bit um, long, but I think the point is that you keep a long financial runway for yourself so that your business can pick up and take over, you know, paying for your complete lifestyle. And that's where we started this conversation with Rodrigo earlier. And um, we had Anna on the stage. It's hard sometimes to imagine as an entrepreneur, what is the point you'll get to where you can feel comfortable full time doing your business. And if you've given up or you're about to or you want to give up your full time job, you know, getting to that point of feeling comfortable can take a while because you're saving and you're paying your regular things and all of that stuff. So I think as long as you're planning for that and you're um, making sure that you know that, that that runway of money is needed, then you can feel secure to pull pull that button, you know, push that button and leave um, your job whenever you feel secure to do that. But also if um, you're getting too burnt out, you might want to look for signs of burnout. And if you're getting to the point where doing both is not helpful to you, maybe your health or your mental health is suffering, or your relationships with your family because you don't have time to spend with them. Those are indications that maybe it's time to look really serious at the entrepreneurship side and take a break from your job if you can. Um, so those are some some things you can look for in, in terms of being ready to um, to make that change. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So welcome, um, Neda is Coquito, who we love um, Coquito around these parts, but that is our friend Luz. So welcome, Luz and April and Jess. This is our conversation today, Entrepreneur Till I Die. We are back in our Social Impact Level Up Club, and we're talking about the perseverance that it takes in order to maintain this entrepreneurship journey. And a lot of the time, social entrepreneurs, particularly people who care about social causes and are trying to create social change. We have a lot of roles that we're playing. We have a lot of things we're passionate about. And we've been called to make this change and to do this work. But in that calling, we also have to overcome a lot of challenges and look um, and be resourceful and try to overcome the things that come our way and might um, stop us in our tracks. So that's what we're talking about today. Welcome anybody who wants to come up on the stage. I'm going to toss it back to Rodrigo and see if you have any other thoughts about the topic. And then um, if not, we'll start closing up the room in about 10 minutes. I think one of the important things that you've mentioned already, Wendy, but I, that I do want to emphasize is that not everybody's path is the same. Uh, every advice that you get from folks, uh, it, it varies wildly, right? Like you said right now, most folks recommend a year. You'll hear even people say, no, you got to have like two years, three years, because most businesses fail in X, Y, Z, and this percentage and this and that. If you go around asking folks, when the best time is, you will get a crazy amount of answers. You'll also get folks that say, hey, I didn't have time. I you know, I didn't necessarily choose my entrepreneur start, right? I, you know, I had a layoff, uh, my, my, my company bankrupted, I was fired. I, I decided to quit, whatever the case may be. So I, I just wanna emphasize that at the time, 
you might be planning for the best part, but it, it almost might just come to you as well. But the last point I'll make is that there never is a perfect time to start your business. Folks will get kind of frozen in this state of saying, well, I kind of want to start, but I'm not feeling sure. And well, I still need some more savings and ah, it's not right. You, if you are looking for the perfect moment to start your business, I'm telling you right now, it will never come. Okay. It is extremely rare for somebody to start a business and they have every single duck in a row. Everything is lined up. You have everything bought. You have the, you know, your, 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 your chains, your uh, finances ready. You got every, no, 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 that, that rarely happens. So what I'm trying to say is you don't want to get caught up waiting for the perfect moment because then you'll end up never starting. That moment will never come. That moment will, will always be at a distance from you. I don't want folks to think like, Hey, I got to have this set, this set, this set. Because if you don't get those things, they're really arbitrary kind of uh, milestones or guidelines that you're looking at at that point. You know, even what we were discussing right now, the one year rule, right, for income. There's no set, there's no hard set stone, you know, fact that says you've got to have a year. No, no. And if it's going to take you 20 years to have one year of income, you know, they're settled. Imagine waiting all that time you finally have that year and you've lost all this time. So my whole point is, if you're looking for the right moment, the right moment, in my opinion, is always as soon as you can. Get it started, even if it's very small steps. You know, whether it's a sprint or a marathon, it starts with one step. So you gotta get started at some point. Something very easy like buying your website name, figuring out what the best name is, registering your website name, your LLC, et cetera small steps at the very minimum or go hard go big all in right in right from the beginning whatever the case may be but i strongly discourage folks from thinking hey i gotta write for the i gotta wait for the right moment that may never come and then finally all those guidelines and all those standards that you hear it's all different for everybody so don't hold yourself to those standards either if you have, you know, four months and you get, man, I really got an idea. I can, hit, I think I can hit it out the park and you've got great resources, great support. I strongly encourage you to do it because I'll end land right here. The worst thing that you could do is let time go by. And you're thinking, what if I had done this? What if I had done that? What if that is the worst question to end off at the very end? Uh, that's yeah. all I got to add, Wendy. Uh, no, that's great. And I, I think there's a couple of things I wanted to add to before we close up. The other day, I had a friend that I knew before I left Maryland, and he came by and said, hey, you know, I've been in business. I saw you started your own business. And, you know, I'm doing really well. So I was asking him what exactly he was doing. And he said, well, you remember when you left, I was selling jade rollers on Amazon because I had sourced a, a Chinese company to manufacture and ship them for me. And I was like, yeah, I remember you were doing that. And he said, so I went from being an Amazon seller to drop shipping and reselling things from Amazon on eBay. And then he had a whole bunch of other things he'd been working on with stocks and, and other streams of income. And as he was mentioning them, he definitely was up in the six, seven streams of income route. And he said, and last year, my business made over $100,000. And I went, what? <laughs> I've been in business for a year. Hold on. How did you do it? And I was asking him more you know, in-depth questions. And he said, well, you know, during the pandemic, while people like even my brother, other people were, you know, quarantining and, and just, you know, not doing very much. I was online building this business and I spent a lot of time focused on the actions that it needed that needed to happen for me to get here. And now I've bought a new car, I've bought a new house, and I'm renting out my other house. So that's yet another stream of income. And this, the story was just amazing because he's still working his regular job. <laughs> he still has a nine to five job that provides insurance for him and his daughter and pays his child support and all of those things. And I was just like, man, go ahead with yourself because you have done so much in a year. And I actually about two years that 
other people just would not have had the perseverance to do and the energy to do, but you always had an entrepreneurial spirit. So I could see how he'd be successful at looking at the latest trends and, and marketing and all of that stuff because he was already on that journey for a long time anyway. So I just wanted to share that story because it, you can still be a successful entrepreneur and have a nine to five job and do all the things like be a parent and show up in the different places you need to show up. But it does take an immense, an immense amount of energy and it also takes an immense amount of commitment. And so if you're one of these people who's struggling to keep all of those things going, you really have to take stock in what's going to be um, ultimately the best for you as a person so that you can thrive financially, but also you know in your health and well-being and all of the things you're trying to do. And so that was one story I wanted to mention, but I also, in the course of the last month, have created a completely, when I was about the last three months, completed a completely new program for people. And it was almost spurred out of this idea of needing to persevere for a year. And when I was working in the government, one of the things I know about social impact programs or so social impact projects or however you want to call it, they take about five years to really scale. And in the first year is the year that most programs die. And that's simply because it's difficult to hire people. It's difficult to contract. It's difficult to get all of your programming in place and um, get partners and all of these different things. And once you kind of get all those things settled, years two and three, you're usually spent just starting to get momentum. So by year three, you're barely getting to full steam. And if you think about that with a social business, it's the same thing. So what can we do to get more people through that first year was my thought. And I've created a high ticket program for people to work with me throughout a year to launch or to build a product service or um, their nonprofit or their social business. And it's been really awesome to see the people who have already signed up and are already starting. They're starting early. And just this week, I had one of them take a virtual training and we did our one-on-one -on -one and she said, oh my gosh, I have to tell you, you are so good at explaining this particular thing that I had no questions. And once I went and did it, it was so easy. And I was going, okay, so in my business, in my entrepreneurial journey, I am making things easier for other people so that they can make an impact. So if I don't keep the perseverance to keep my business going, then who are these people going to go to when they have questions or they need templates or they have something that's difficult? And what's going to happen is then these people are not going to do their social impact mission or they're not going to do their project or program. And then we collectively as a society will have less access to things that solve our problems. So in my head, <laughs> what that means for me is that, you know, I need to keep creating these solutions for people so that they can keep going in this social impact space and using the knowledge that I have from my years of making successful programs and services. And as I'm seeing that growth in my clients, it's entirely um, reaffirming for me that my business needs to exist. And so as I go through that process as an entrepreneur, I'm able to further refine the things that I'm creating for the particular problems that my clients have. And it's exciting and it's cool and it's stuff that I like to do anyway and stuff that I would want to be doing, um, spending my entire time doing. So my business is both um, fulfilling me on a personal and professional level. And it's also starting to fulfill me on a financial level as well. And that's a year into it. So I just wanted to share that progress with our community so that you guys could hear um, one, I'm not intending to go anywhere. You guys are stuck with me. Um, but also just the idea that we as a collective are starting to make movement and, and big movement in um, different cities and different places all around the world. And it's going to eventually add up all of the people who are part of this movement have their things that they're passionate about. They have their social causes that they work on regularly. They have partners that they're galvanizing around this work. And as we collectively do all of this, I can hope and I can expect that some of the changes policy-wise or some of the changes in our social infrastructure will be forced to change. And I think that's one of my big goals is to make sure that our community is being as disruptive as possible in a good way. 
to make sure that we don't have a, an eroding social fabric in America or the rest of the world. So that's where I wanted to, um, one, just say thank you guys for being here today at our um, Welcome Back to Clubhouse <laughs> slash podcast episode and also um, Entrepreneur Till I Die and Not Giving Up. And I'm so excited that all of you guys are here with me for this journey. So thanks for being here, everyone. And Rodrigo and Sashin and Anna, thanks for coming to the stage. And thank you, Christina and April and Jess for sticking with us for the conversation. It's been nice to have you guys today. So Rodrigo, anything else you want to add? No, I think you did a great job there talking about your story. And I really appreciate just having the space, you know, making sure that folks like Anna and Sasha and have a opportunity to ask their questions and talk about things, you know what I'm saying? Especially from folks like yourself that have uh, experience in so many different facets, whether it's government work, whether it's private sector work, or it's being an entrepreneur. So thanks again, Wendy. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Social Impact Level Up podcast. For me, Wendy V, and my co-host, Rodrigo Bravo, we sincerely appreciate your follows, your likes, your subscribes, and your shares. Make sure that you're reaching out to us on social media. We'd love to hear from you. Have a wonderful day, and remember, keep changing the world.